Today on The State of Health, we're diving into a critical conversation about mammography screening recommendations. The State of Health is a semi-weekly podcast and publication where we talk about the most important news and research in medicine and healthcare. Go to stateofhealth.care for more information about our YouTube, newsletter, and publication. Welcome back to The State of Health. Recently, the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force, a key player in healthcare recommendations, changed its stance on the age for initiating mammography screening. It's lowered the age from 50 to 40 years. This could have a significant impact on over 20 million U.S. women and sets a new standard primary care practitioners are expected to follow. But let's delve into this a bit more and examine the evidence and implications. The first question we have to ask is, is there new evidence that mortality from breast cancer is increasing? The answer, it appears, is no. In fact, breast cancer mortality has consistently been decreasing in the U.S., particularly in women under 50. Breast cancer mortality has halved over the last three decades. This pattern can be seen globally as well, even in countries where mammography screening is less prevalent, suggesting that the decrease is a result of improved treatment, not increased screening. On the same note, is there new evidence that mammography screening is increasingly beneficial? The answer, again, seems to be no. There have been no new trials since the previous recommendation, and the ones that we have show no significant effect. It's important to note that fast-growing cancers, which are more common in women in their 40s, are more likely to be missed by screenings. The updated recommendation is largely based on statistical models that predict the impact of lowering the screening age. These models suggest that screening mammography reduces breast cancer mortality by about 25% and conclude that screening 1,000 women from 40 to 74 years of age, instead of 50 to 74, would result in one to two fewer breast cancer deaths over a lifetime. However, The reliance on statistical models presents its own set of challenges. These models are based on assumptions that might not always hold true. For instance, these models assume a 25% relative risk reduction, which is higher than what is observed in meta-analyses of the randomized trials. So does this balance of benefits and potential harms justify this new public health imperative? To put it into perspective, the risk of death from any cause in the next 10 years for U.S. women in their 40s is about 3%, regardless of screening. The benefit of mammography is a reduction of a woman's 10-year risk of death from breast cancer from about 0.3% to about 0.2%, a difference of 0.1 percentage point. Essentially, with screening, the likelihood of not dying from breast cancer in the next 10 years increases from 99.7% to 99.8%. Moreover, the potential downsides are significant. The most common outcome of mammography screening is false alarms, which affect 36% of women aged 40 to 49 over a 10-year course of biennial screening. These false alarms require further testing, cause considerable fear and anxiety, and can lead to substantial out-of-pocket costs for some individuals. In addition, there's the issue of disparities in breast cancer mortality between black and white women. While the rates have fallen in both groups, black women continue to have higher mortality rates. The proposed change in mammography recommendations would hardly address this disparity. In fact, it could potentially exacerbate the problems facing poor women who are disproportionately black. So what's the bottom line here? The U.S. Preventive Services Task Force's recent decision to reduce the age for initiating mammography screening from 50 to 40 years is a significant shift which could influence the medical practices of primary care practitioners and impact over 20 million women in the U.S. However, the evidence behind this decision is not entirely conclusive. While statistical models suggest that this change could result in one to two fewer breast cancer deaths over a lifetime per 1,000 women screened, these models are based on assumptions that may not always hold true. For example, they assume a 25% relative risk reduction, which is higher than what is observed in meta-analyses of the randomized trials. Furthermore, the actual benefit of screening is a slight reduction in a woman's 10-year risk of death from breast cancer, from about 0.3% to about 0.2%. However, this tiny improvement in mortality rate is counterbalanced by a significant increase in false alarms, leading to additional testing, fear, anxiety, and potential financial burden, impacting 36% of women aged 40 to 49 over a 10-year course of biennial screening. Finally, this change in screening recommendations may fail to address the pressing issue of racial disparities in breast cancer mortality and could potentially worsen the situation for disadvantaged women, who are disproportionately black. Therefore, while the change in recommendations is an attempt to improve breast cancer outcomes, the benefits and drawbacks need to be carefully weighed, and the potential implications on the healthcare system, 
and the patient population must be thoroughly understood. This decision, like all in medicine, needs to be grounded in solid, indisputable evidence and tailored to the needs and risks of the individual patient. Anyways, friends, that is going to do it for today's State of Health. If you enjoyed this, please do me such a huge favor. Click those like and subscribe buttons, and if you're listening as a podcast, go consider leaving a review or a five-star rating. Don't forget to check out stateofhealth.care for more relevant medical news and content. Until next time, keep your curiosity peaked and your stethoscope close.